Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we've got DJ Khaled going on a sneaker vision quest, New Balance celebrating Gray Day, the week's hottest releases, and of course, a hard pass. All right, let's start with some hot takes as we scroll through Instagram and look for things to make fun of after I muted Dylan Brooke memes from the timeline because we're on to bigger and better things. We're recording this before game six and maybe game seven, so... <sighs> Anyway, it's May, so that means there's going to be a bunch of Michael Jordan-related anniversaries since he was such a fire-breathing dragon of awesome during the playoffs. My two favorites this week are Soul Collector posting that 34 years ago because 34 is such a special milestone of a number or something, MJ hit the shot against Cleveland in the Air Jordan 4 playoffs, also known as the Breads. And Nice Kick celebrating the 28th anniversary of MJ debuting the Concord 11s. Stay tuned as we get closer to June and we celebrate things like, I don't know, the 26th anniversary of the flu game and Marv Albert's, oh, what a spectacular move call turning 32. Only in sneaker culture would you hear Jordan Brand makes too many Jordans in whack colorways and yet celebrate random anniversaries like this. I don't get it. Anyway, Travis Scott showed off his Nike Mac Attack collab and, you know, it's, well, it's exactly what you thought it would be. A Nike Mac Attack with the reverse swoosh. And you guys thought the Air Max 1s or the Jordans were lazy? Like, if this was a 1984 original and Travis just cut off the swooshes to reverse them, that's actually wild. But if this is just a 2023 retro, I'm a little less enthused. Johnny Mac has to be throwing a racket at this effort, right? New Balance is they celebrated Gray Day, which is not the same thing as Dre Day this past week, joining Air Max Day and Boost Week in the growing list of made-up sneaker holidays that brands push on us and we cover them because we have nothing better to do. But Gray Day is actually very apropos for New Balance because multiple generations have grown up wearing nothing but gray New Balances. So shout out to them for embracing their heritage as we wait for other brands to make up their own sneaker holidays like a Puma Clyde Day or a Solomon XT6 Day so I can find out more about Solomon or an Under Armour Day on January 6th because they saw their logo way too much on that day. Salehi Bimberry has new Crocs Pollock Slides that is dropping later this month. Psh, those are clearly copies of some Yeezy slides that I've never seen or cared about before. What? I'm just getting ahead of the trolls, people. The homie G-Rock over at the shoe game did a comparison of the Vans new school, an updated version of the Vans old school. It's a chunkier version of the iconic old school, but without going full dad shoe, thankfully. I like them, but I also wish they had come with Vans Ultra Kush insoles or just go all the way with it and slap on the comfy Kush. And it looks like the response for them has been positive, which is not something you see when, say, Nike messes with the Dunks or the Jordan 1s. Uh, shout out to Puerto Rico for an amazing WWE PLE this past weekend. Man. The crowd was hyped for everything and they played their role to perfection. I know a lot of it has to do with oversaturation here in the States, but man, if Americans could be less snarky, smart marks who think they know everything because they read rumors on the internet and more just actual fans, wrestling would be so much better. Like, let's just all embrace our inner homo sapien, man. Uh, big surprise. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a great game. Huh. It's like Nintendo knows what they're doing most of the time and that they've earned the benefit of the doubt even when trailers have less than optimal frame rates. That being said, I am seriously considering holding off on playing this game until 2025 when the eventual Switch 2 finally happens and they drop a 4K remaster that they will definitely make me pay for again and not just give me a free upgrade. Like I said, they know what they're doing. And before we move on to the heat check, I just want to say something about my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers. It's a bit, people. I could stop talking about my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers, but if I did and they happen to not blow a 3-1 lead and beat the Warriors and down the line become my 18-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers, then people would accuse me of being a bandwagon hopper. I refuse to do that. I want everyone to know that I ride for my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers and that win or lose, I will continue to do this bit where I refer to my 17 but hopefully 18-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers by their proper title, 17 or 18-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers, who acknowledges that five of those chips are from Minneapolis, but who cares because we're trying to beat Boston and we'll take every advantage that we can get.
All right, it's time for the Heat Check, where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. We have the Dime Adidas Superstar ADV that's on the 15th for 100 bucks each. The Nike Dunk Low Micah Green that's on the 16th for 110. The Jordan Tatum One Barbershop that's going to be $120. Sean Wortherspoon Adidas Gazelle Indoor Corduroy that's on the 16th. The Air Jordan 5 Craft Light or Wood Brown on the 17th for 210. The Women's Air Jordan 3 Lucky Green on the 18th for 200. The Nike Dunk Mid Panda on the 18th for 115. Puma Stewie 2 Ruby on the 19th for 125. Puma Clyde Super Puma on the 19th for 110. The Reebok Blast Lakers for 160 bucks. The Nocta Nike Hot Step Air Terra Snake Skin on the 19th for 180. The Fragment Design Clot Nike Dunk Low on the 19th. And then our co pick of the week is the SNS Reebok Question AI on the 16th for 180. No, this is not a new colorway of the Reebok question that was generated by ChatGTP or an AI art generator, although they are playing into the trend. It's the latest collaboration between sneakers and stuff and Reebok on Allen Iverson's first signature shoe, and this time they're simply referring to it as AI, maybe hoping that they can get a few dorks out there who think the shoe was created by some bot. In reality, this new collab is a premium take on the question with a luxurious leather upper, an embroidered Q, an SNS logo on the heel, gum sole, and actual hexalite cushioning. It's honestly a take on questions that I can't believe we have not gotten until 2023. And then, for my co-pick of the week is the Air Jordan 1 Across the Spider-Verse, aka Next Chapter on the 20th for $200. After a sneakers app shock drop that I'm sure nobody was upset they missed out on last week, the proper release of the Across the Spider-Verse Air Jordan 1 tie-in gets its proper release this weekend. And if you thought it was painful trying to get them during the shock drop when not everybody knew it was happening, imagine how hard it's going to be on its proper release date. Pretty hard, right? Like the dilemma Miles Morales looks like he's going to have to deal with in Across the Spider-Verse hard, huh? Well, unlike Miles, who will probably have to wait until the third Spider-Verse movie to find out if his problem is solved, you at least know in a few minutes if you struck out again on sneakers. And yes, if you're wondering, there is a third Spider-Verse movie. It's called Beyond the Spider-Verse. It's a direct sequel to Across the Spider-Verse, and more than likely, it will also have an Air Jordan 1 Chicago tie-in that you will probably miss out on as well. So... The saga of DJ Khaled's thirst trying to score J Balvin's next Air Jordan collab went places, man. It's it's almost like they planned all of this to get maximum exposure for the shoes. Like, I could be a little off with the timeline, but it looks like it begins with Balvin popping up at a big F1 race in Miami with the threes for the first time. He shares the inspiration for the threes, citing the beautiful Colombian sunset. And then we see him chatting up with DJ Khaled, and Khaled is begging for a pair of the shoes. Next, we see Balvin courtside for the Heat game in the same pair. This time, he's rocking shorts so photographers can get a full picture of the shoes. Okay, up to this point, I could have bought the whole story to be totally straight and legit. Like, I've certainly been at events where people are chatting it up and doing the whole, how you doing, man? And, oh, you know, you know, just trying to be like you, big dog, bit. And celebrities pop up in new sneakers courtside of basketball games all the time. It's the next few beats where the story just becomes a clever attempt at viral marketing. Khaled is now at what I'm assuming is one of his many homes, wearing a pair of Balvin Jordan 2s and talking about how he gives away his own look samples to fellow celebs and that Balvin needs to do the same for him and maybe the most hype beat version of paying it forward or whatever. Khaled even goes as far as to show off the Tiana Taylor Jordans that Tiana sent him. It's a wild couple of days or, or hours or I don't even know how long this whole saga went and it just so happens to end at a golf course where Balvin hands over his possibly one of one samples to Khaled in the most unnatural natural piece of acting I've seen in a long time time the thirst was wild yo and i'm not even including college post begging nike for a pair somewhere guys like Pusha t and bad bunny are glad they're with adidas michael jordan showed off his golf swing for golf digest i mean it's clearly the greatest swing ever look at the stance the form the back sw- the follow through i mean it's perfect he's the greatest golfer to ever golf LeBron James wishes he could golf like the GOAT can golf. Like, did you know MJ has like six majors and that's the most majors anyone has ever won in golf and no one can ever surpass him? Like, sure, Tiger has 15, but whatever. Six is the real GOAT number anyway. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. And that is my impression of the internet.
Uh, speaking of Golf Digest, they said that a computer algorithm crunched the numbers and said that a 10 handicap golfer will shoot an even par 72 once every 194 years. Well, that's good to know. I just got like 190 more years. We're on our way, yo. Anyway, uh, Panini America showed off part of the production process for their now released 2021-22 Flawless Basketball set. And they even got Luka Doncic to sign some cards for the video. It is wild that those tiny NBA logos that you see on a jersey, that it is then cut up and glued to a piece of cardboard and signed by Luka. And it could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And could you imagine paying thousands of dollars for a pack of these and getting somebody like future Philippine Basketball Association all-star Dylan Brooks? I wouldn't wish that on Dylan Brooks. Maybe Pat Bev, but not Brooksy. Tom Sachs says he'll do better. We'll, we'll see. Uh, before we move on to the hard pass segment, I just want to talk about the Beastie Boys, one of the greatest rap groups of all time. Their music inspired multiple generations and was a staple of MTV for my generation growing up. Their spot among the greats of the game is set in stone, but man, can we set up a Patreon or something so I don't have to listen to their catalog in every other movie? In the past month, I've heard No Sleep Till Brooklyn in two movies for their needle drops. Okay, maybe it's not so much the Beastie Boys, but the concept of needle drops. Well, maybe it's not even needle drops, but the choice of music for the needle I'm just saying, man, did the Batman really need to play the same Nirvana song a bunch of times and base the entire score off of it? Like, really? Anyway. It's time for this week's Hard Pass. We'll take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go like Yeezys. The biggest albatross in all of sneaker culture has finally come to a conclusion as Adidas and Kanye West have come to an agreement to sell the remaining stock of Yeezy footwear, according to CEO Bjorn Golden this past Thursday. The inventory, valued at over $1.3 billion, will roll out sometime in the future, but it hasn't been determined how exactly Adidas will sell them. Along with West receiving a 15% commission from all Yeezy sales, in line with his previous agreements with the brand, Adidas will also donate proceeds from the sales to international organizations and communities that West harmed with his comments and actions. If you've forgotten what West has done just in the past several months, either because so many things have happened since or you're a fanboy who's being intentionally obtuse. Here's a list in somewhat chronological order. Wears White Lives Matter shirt, a fascist counter to the Black Lives Matter movement. Posts anti-Semitic comments on social media platforms. Accuses people who normally defend him of being influenced by Jewish people. Shared conspiracy theories so wild that even Fox News thought it was too hot to air. Forced the shop to not air an episode with West for the same reasons Fox News did. Pops up on the Drink Champs podcast and claims George Floyd died from fentanyl. Claims to be buying Parler, a D-list conservative social media site, which is dumb because all social media sites eventually die in a flaming ball of stupid. Doesn't end up buying Parler, a D-list conservative social media site, which is smart because all social media sites eventually die in a flaming ball of stupid. Closes Donda Academy and opens it again hours later. Reports pop up of West's fascination with Hitler going as far back as 2018, apologizes for questioning George Floyd's murder, then compares himself to George, paid settlements with former employees who accused him of using anti-Semitic language, compares the term anti-Semitic to the N-word, allegations of showing porn to employees, including explicit images of his ex-wife, visited Mar-a-Lago because that's a good idea, declares he's running for president because that's a good idea, appears on Alex Jones's show because that's a good idea. And now we're here, with shares of Adidas up 2% when Golden confirmed they were selling off the remaining Yeezy stock. Why? Because capitalism rules everything around me. Sorry, Rizza. A few months ago, we said we were done with Kanye content on this show, and we're still done. A quick search on TMZ of Kanye news right before this Adidas announcement let us know that A, he got married again, B, he was at the Fear of God show in a mask with his new wife. C, he's co-parenting. And D, still on that Kanye 2024 bullshit while working with D-list right-wing extremists. In other words, nothing's really changed. So, yeah, still done. We'll cover the business of Yeezys when there's more to talk about. When they get released, they'll show up on the heat check. We might even bring back our favorite recurring bit where we look up the textbook definition of the nicknames y'all give his shoes. But stuff about Kanye himself? I can go kick rocks. Hmm. The decision to go on vacation right now 
just keeps getting better and better by the minute. All right, that's going to do it for the show. Thank you for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you in two weeks, but not before we leave you with a viewer Hard Pass. Yo, Jacques. Jacques, what's up, buddy? How come you don't name your sneaker unboxing Jacques in the box? All right, peace. Well, I'm glad I'm going on vacation. If you would like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message, your social if you want, no more than 30 seconds. All right, I'll see you in a few weeks. Peace.